Network originated with the Colorado Climate Center at Colorado State University in 1998, thanks in part to the Fort Collins flood a year prior. This is a community project. Everyone can help, young, old, and in between. The only requirements are an enthusiasm for watching and reporting weather conditions and a desire to learn more about how weather can affect and impact our lives. Our ambition is to increase the density of precipitation data available throughout the country by encouraging volunteer weather observing. To become a volunteer, head to our website, kokoraz.org. Click on the Join Kokoraz link and fill in the form. You will need a high-capacity 4-inch diameter rain gauge to participate in this network. A link is provided on how to purchase one. All volunteers having the same gauge assures all the data collected is accurate. When situating your gauge, avoid placing it near trees or other obstructions. An ideal location would be on a post at least as far away from a building or tree as it is tall. If that is not possible, then place your gauge equidistance from the trees or structures. The gauge should be 2 feet high in open regions and about 5 feet high in developed areas. Try to level your gauge and if possible, bevel your post. Now you're ready to make your first observation. As the green gradually fills your rain gauge, when it's time for your observation in the morning, which for many of you is at 7 o'clock, take a close examination of the rain that actually fell in your gauge. You will oftentimes see this little curvature in the water that's in your gauge. And you may be tempted to just look at this, take the top, and put down 0.70 as your storm total. But this is referred to as a meniscus. Surface tension just pulls the water up. So instead, what we would like you to do is read the bottom. Look very carefully at this line, 0 0.65, 0 0.66, and it would be about 0.67. Draw that across would be the accurate total instead of the 0 0.70. So again, read from the bottom of the meniscus when you take a rain gauge. In my example right here, it rained 0 0.67, which I will then put, of course, on the website. Your gauge is designed to hold 11 inches of rain. If you get more than one inch, pour the first inch out of the tube and then pour the remaining water into the tube. Continue this process if necessary and make sure to keep track of your totals. But most days, you will likely not get any precipitation, but please report those zeros as well. Also, if you feel a few sprinkles in the air or see a couple of drops in your gauge, report a trace by putting a T for your precipitation amount. If you live in a climate that experiences snowfall, remove the inner tube during the cold season. Brush off the snow around your gauge, then take your sample inside and allow it to melt to get the liquid equivalency of the snowfall. To measure depth, it's best to measure on a white board that you can paint yourself, although a glass table or other object can be used. Apply the same principles you did for your rain gauge when placing your whiteboard in your yard. In this example, just frost formed on the whiteboard overnight, so zero was recorded for the precipitation amounts. Be sure to clean your board every morning to make sure it's ready for the next 24 hours of precipitation. If the wind is strong, or if you live in an open area, several samples averaged together may be necessary to get a more accurate estimation of the snowfall. The same can be said for snow depth. Several measurements are usually needed for an accurate representation of the snow depth under most circumstances. About once a week, a core should be taken of your snow cover to give an estimation to the water content on the landscape. Find a spot near your average depth, stick in your funnel, twist it in, and then remove carefully. You may need to quickly cover the bottom of your tube to reduce snow loss. The Kokoraz website will give you a technique to weigh your snow to give an estimation of precipitation equivalency. But most of you can just allow it to melt slowly and then measure out the liquid water. Place that information in the melted from the core location of your daily entry form. Kokoraz.org would also like you to measure freezing rain and hail. Much more information about measuring those precipitation events can be found on our website. Precipitation varies so much from spot to spot. These differences are important. Plus, recording the weather can be a fun hobby for people of all ages. 
Cocorez, because every drop counts. <laughs>